Hello, I'm Alex Davies, um, founder of Wealth Club. Today I'm with Andy Bloxham of Foresight Group to talk about the new Foresight Williams VCT share class. So Andy, tell me about the um, Foresight Williams VCT. What is it? So this is a new VCT share class which is following exactly the same investment strategy as our Foresight Williams EIS fund which has been in the market for, for three years. The premise of, of, that, of the fund, the EIS and now the VCT share class is to capitalise on both Foresight's proven SME investment experience. We've been in the market for 30 years and we've, we've made, returned good, made good returns for investors but we're adding to that the excellence of Williams Advanced Engineering and allowing Williams Advanced Engineering to bring its expertise to, to startups. Just to explain a bit further exactly um, what Foresight's role is and what's Williams role and you know, what do you get out of this? Okay, Williams have provided their engineering excellence, a consulting capacity to lots of blue chips. And they wanted to be able to provide the same advice to startups. That was effectively the, the premise of the fund. Foresight is a proven SME investment manager so the collaboration of those two entities is a, brings a unique product to the market. It's effectively a joint venture on a day-to-day -day basis. So we work as one team, but Foresight focus very much on the, the, the financial side of any business and the portfolio management side, and we've, we've got proven expertise in that capacity. Williams bring their te technical expertise to predominantly sourcing investments from different places, helping us particularly on the due diligence size and the technical capacity, and then also providing their expertise once we've invested to help the companies over problems from an engineering point of view, redesigning their product perhaps, or scaling up their manufacturing capability. So give me an idea of the types of company you're looking for then. Sure. Now, I, I like to summarize this by, by saying hard tech. And you can think of hard tech as hard to touch, hard to do, and hard to copy. It's hard to touch because they're generally a device that's been engineered or manufactured and that allows the Williams engineers to really help the company solve problems, make their product better or optimise it for production or just help the company build up their production facilities. Hard to do because generally the founding teams have really deep technical understanding and often the, the companies that we look at are spin-outs from universities. Not directly spin-outs, but we'll probably do one, stay, one investment round later than that but they probably originated within a, within a university. And then finally, hard to copy, because we're looking for novel technology that's defensible. We aim to invest in these companies for a long period of time there. That, well, I say long period of time. Four to eight years is the period that we state in the, in the fund documentation. And that all being well should allow any of the companies we invest in to generate a very attractive return. And we hope that every investment that we make should have a chance to make at least 10 times return. Okay, as you say, so you launched the EIS um, version of this a few years ago. Um, the VCT might not invest in the companies you've invested in already, but it's going to be, it, it might well do, and it's probably a lot of the same sort of thing. So tell me, give me some examples of EIS investments you've made under sure. Foresight Williams banner. So some of the most recent investments. First company is called Open Bionics. They're based in Bristol. It's a robotics company originally. Well, that's, that's the, the experience of the founder. But what they're building is a prosthetic bionic arm. And the novelty about this product is they're using bespoke software to create a scan of the arm, and then they can 3D print the arm. So they can create a bionic prosthetic arm much more cheaply than any alternative on the market. And what that means is that they can provide those arms to children because they can provide them more cost-effectively, and but also reimbursed by healthcare, either medical insurance or, or healthcare systems. So that's a really potentially disruptive product. As you can imagine, electrical mechanical engineering through robotics, that's something that the Williams engineers can help with. And also they can help that company potentially as they scale up their, their manufacturing capabilities. The other really interesting thing about that company in particular is they are building a following with the end users of these, of these arms. And they also got a licensing agreement with Disney. So children can have a Disney branded arm or a Star Wars branded arm because Star Wars is owned by Disney. So you could have your R2-D2 branded arm or even Iron Man from Marvel. So, and their strap line is turning disabilities into superpowers. So the really exciting thing about this business is they started off with prosthetic arms, but there's no reason why that tagline and the brand that they're building 
could be applied to any prosthetics or orthotics. So very exciting business, that one. Another business, completely different, is called Synaptech. It's based in Scotland. It was a spin out from the University of Strathclyde. We invested in that business in, in April of this year. And they're making a sensor for power lines. So nowadays, power lines, there was a big blackout a few months ago. Power lines need to measure what's going on if they want to monitor and, and balance the load on the grid. And it's very expensive to put sensors along power lines, particularly in remote areas like the Highlands of Scotland or, or a desert where you've got a cable going from overground to underground or, or even nowadays offshore wind arrays, wind turbines. This company have developed a completely new type of sensor that actually uses fibre optic cables. So every, nowadays most power lines have fibre optic cables embedded in the middle of them. And this company by using fibre optic and effectively light waves, it's completely passive. It doesn't require its own power supply doesn't require its own communications infrastructure that any other type of sensor would need. And it can send signals at the speed of light across great distances. So this allows a power company to monitor a whole network of, of power lines really efficiently, way more efficiently than anybody else. So again, very disruptive product, deep technical understanding of the, the academic founders. And interestingly, Williams on this one can actually potentially redesign the sensor using their materials knowledge to dramatically reduce the bill of materials for the sensor that this company had produced. So two completely different examples where they're tapping into Williams engineering expertise and all being well, that, that engineering expertise is going to help these companies succeed. How do you find these deals? You've mentioned universities. Where do they typically come from? Yeah, so we, both Williams and Foresight are sourcing opportunities for the fund equally. Foresight, within the private equity team, as you would imagine with most funds, we, we get introduced to opportunities through all sorts of advisors in the market. In addition to that, Williams taps into its own network and also tracks universities, nowadays accelerators and catapults. So you might have manufacturing catapults or um, Synaptec came from the offshore renewable energy catapult in Scotland. What's a catapult? Catapult is effectively like an accelerator, but most of the accelerators say set squared is an accelerator attached to a university. So they might take the spin out from the university and then help them position their opportunity for investors. So just, just help them work through some of the, the initial problems and help them pitch to investors and make it a more credible proposition. And catapults to do something similar, but not necessarily attached to a university. So they're, okay. they're almost providing advice to those companies in the very, very earliest stages before they take institutional investment. And there's lots of money chasing these sort of deals at the moment. Are you finding valuations are a bit of a problem? We make a real effort to find deals that aren't being chased by a lot of investors. So, yes, I guess, particularly in London, deals tend to be competitive and valuations are probably higher now than they've been for, for a long time. We make an effort to source as many deals as we can from outside of London. And also the interesting thing about having Williams expertise is if we're looking at a particular type of technology that Williams might be used as a, might be a customer for, they can take an earlier view than another purely financial investor might. And also, with a lot of founders seem to be very attracted to working with Williams and having that expertise that Williams brings. So we're able to get into a competitive process that maybe another financial investor might not be able to get into, which really sets us apart. And often we can get better value deals as a result. And who should go into this? You know, usually you know, VCTs have got lots of existing investments in them. Well, why would you want to go into this? I think this is something completely different to other VCTs out there. So it is, it is a different risk reward profile but I think there is demand now from investors looking for, for something different. I think uh, there are many investors that like to spread their investments even across VCTs and they want a portfolio of different types of risk reward profiles amongst VCTs or, or EISs. We'll maintain the EIS because this VCT was actually a response to investor demand. So they like the strategy of the EIS, but they wanted a different wrapper to be able to invest through. And I think this this VCT offers something that, that investors want. How involved are you, or how involved are Williams, maybe in, in running these companies once um, you're, you've invested in them? Post-investment, during the investment process, day to day, it's, it's like one team from my point of view. Foresight Williams, it's as if I work on the Foresight Williams team, even though I'm employed by Foresight Group, and then there's a dedicated team within Williams Advanced Engineering, their ventures team. Post-investment, an employee of Foresight Group will, will take a seat on the board, and 
often we will introduce a chairman or a non-executive as well and, and that's sourced through could be the Williams network or it could be Foresight's network. In addition to that, Foresight have a dedicated portfolio manager and the purpose of that role is to build a relationship with our investee companies and to, as far as possible, package up uh, identify areas of work where Williams Advanced Engineering could help those companies on a paid basis, but discounted against uh, a normal blue chip client. And the, the, the trick is both to identify work that is genuinely going to help the company and also identify the work that's on a basis that Williams can do it on a, a, you know, profitably. So Williams want to do it and they want to help the companies, but it's a valuable piece of work for the companies themselves. And it's, it, that, that's a right for the companies, it's not, it's not an obligation. So finally, Andy, I want to put some money into a VCT this year. Why should I put some with you? Lots of VCTs on the market look quite similar, but this is, this is very different. It's a different return profile, and we're, we're investing in some really exciting companies. Now, th those companies might be earlier stage, but we believe that the combination of Foresight's proven SME investment experience with the technical expertise of Williams is going to help those companies overcome problems and will provide attractive returns for investors. It's a, it's a unique collaboration. Andy Bloxham, um, Foresight Williams, thank you very much. Thank you.